Rightio, you've got Mark from Aussie Heads and Race Engines here again. Um, since the last time we've uh, seen this Holden 253, 4.2 litre, um, we've washed it all up. I've given her a paint, I've put it all together. We have just some spare um, head gaskets and stuff, just bolted it all loosely, sump on and that, and painted it all. And then uh, let it dry and pull it all back together. That way, um, when we go and bolt everything together, when we put our gaskets down, you'll be able to see a clean, nice gasket instead of just building a whole engine and jamming a coat of jam all over it, paint all over it. So um, just adds a little bit more professional touch. Um, what I've done before I put on the stand, we've done our lifter bores and that. It's all been board hand deck and da da da. Um, I've uh, put the cam bearings in it. Um, we put all our gallery plugs and Welsh plugs in the back. The back cam Welsh plugs in. Um, put it on the engine stand. What I've done now is, of course, washed it up and put all the bearings in all the tunnels and the, the caps tension them all down. The same with uh, the comrades here. All right. tension, them, tension them up with the bearing shells in them. And what we do then is we actually measure the inside micrometer, the inside diameter of the tunnel. All right, take a measurement of our micrometer and we measure our crankshaft and you're gonna get exact bearing clearance. Um, most of the guys um, you're doing it at home. You can use plastic gauge. Plastic gauge is good. It's an estimate. Um, when you're in a shop, of course, you've got micrometers, so you know, you're going to use um, accurate stuff. With this motor, um, we've obtained, we've got um, on the crankshaft here, it's been around 1010 10 undersize. Those bearings are always under because you're grinding them smaller, so they're undersize. Pistons are oversize. Um, yeah, we're ground at 10.10. Um, when we've done all our measurements and everything from our shells and uh, Conrad tunnels, um, we've got um, one, and, one and a half hour on our um, main bearings, one and a half to one and seven tenths along the whole five. And the big ends range from about um, one and a half to, you know, uh, one and seven tenths as well. So this thing, I'm only going to put a standard oil pump in it like a brand new one of course but a standard pump because with the small clearances um, you're going to get good oil pressure so um, when you want to run a high volume you know volume, high volume is different they're a bigger volume pump so they're pumping not pressure but more oil at the engine volumes um, the reason why you go up in size with the uh, high pressure and high volume pumps is the engines doing high rpms um, having said that as well, when you want to go and shove a high pressure pump at an engine, you want to run a little bit more bearing clearance um, because if you if you don't, if you you know you start running your you know when you're one and a half thousand clearances, you're going to have oil pressure like way off the Richter scale, you know, and an oil filter will pop it, you know, around about 115. The dimple is on a filter, so. Anyway, that's uh, us for the moment. Um, what I've done too is also, I've put the camshaft already in, like um, I've all lubed it up, put the oil pump drive shaft on a Holden. They drive up the front here and it's an external external oil pump on a V8 Australian General Motors Holden engine. Um, I've put the camshaft already in before the crankshaft, just so when you're feeding it through, you've got easy access. You know, you haven't got a crank here and everything in the way and then feed a cam. So, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff on engines not usually, you know, put the crank and rods in and then people go through on a jam a camshaft through all that stuff. So the cam's all in, the thrust plates on and all uh, tensioned up. So from here we'll um, pull all our caps off and everything and um, we'll bolt our, crank, uh, bolt our crankshaft in. And... Um, That'll be well and uh, truly on the way to getting some uh, pistons and uh, con rods in it and uh, finishing up a uh, bottom end. All the heads are machined. Got them over here, might as well have a look. Like I said, I've painted everything. 
kicked in the dark. These are all being inserted. Heads are all fully recoded. It's in the dark, I know, but you get a better, better shot when they um, before they go on anyway. But yeah, they're all got gas inserts in them or LPG gas. So yeah. So um, that all just about you wrap it up for this episode. Just before for, for our American viewers, um, I've got a um, poster here on the Holden story. This is uh, General Motors Holden is Australia General Motors. Um, and like our first model was the FX 214, which is in 1948. It goes through, like with, there's our Monaros, it's Moddy, um, Tirana, the XU1s. Um, we do all right, us as you guys, you know, and uh, all these were with our own Australian engine in it. Back in the early days, the Monaros, they used to run a uh, Chev, the HKs, you know, that's a, a Hurricane concept car. And then uh, the XU2. And then we started running our V8 Holden like this one here, which is the smaller cube one, and then the five litre one. And then in our late model Commodores now, which you guys call your GT, GTO Pontiacs, I think they're called, is our um, yeah, SS or G, GTS Monaro. So yeah, that's a bit on um, Australian uh, cars, Holden. Okay, well that'll um, do us all for the moment. And those years and race engines. Catch you later.